Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to another installment of our write-in show, I'm Telling Tyler, where you can send me tea, ask questions, and so long as it's at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Telling Tyler at gmail.com. All right, let's get started with our next submission from... Aha, all right. I can use this person's name, and this one is coming from Johnny. And Johnny says, I'm a trans man who hasn't transitioned yet, who is interested in Lolita fashion. I'd honestly love to be able to dress in Lolita, but I am genuinely terrified of being misgendered every day for dressing in a very feminine style. I even had a dream where I went to a store and tried on some Lolita-esque skirts, but the people told me it didn't suit me and I shouldn't even try that. I am also wondering if wearing pants in a Lolita ensemble is even acceptable, since I cannot wear skirts in public without wanting to fling myself into the sun and cry so hard it is extinguished. I love the Lolita aesthetic so much and would love to be able to embrace cute fashion like that, but the expectations for trans men in the trans community seem to be that they can't even be a bit feminine in their fashion choices because that apparently makes them fakers who are stealing resources from real trans men. And the crippling dysphoria that would hit if I wore a skirt or dress while still pre-transition are discouraging me a lot. Should I just give up on Lolita or at least try by adding some accessories to my closet and see where it goes from there? Sorry if this is confusing. I'm bad at writing emails and putting my feelings into words. I hope you're having a great day slash night slash whatever right now, Tyler. Signed, Johnny. Oh, man. All right, so I'm going to preload this with all my specifics so you know where this particular resource is coming from. I am a cis woman. I am not trans in any way. I can never fully encapsulate the experience of a trans person. I want to put that straight out verbatim, obviously, as a cis woman who has been misgendered maybe once or twice. I was gonna say as a cis woman who's never been misgendered in my life, but like when you have the name Tyler and you get called to the office in a small school and most of the Tylers in the schools are boys, like not the same thing, nowhere near the same level, obviously. Getting called to the office as a boy over and over does put a dent in you a little bit. One story in specific when I was actually misgendered in person and not just by name was where I had cut my hair short, I had a little pixie cut. Some guy came up to me in middle school from behind and he was like, hey dude, hey dude. And I turned around and he was like, oh. So yeah, that doesn't feel good, but obviously not remotely on the same level as what a transitioning person must feel in no way, shape or form. So I just wanna put out there that while I can never fully like describe or truly speak to that experience because I am a cis woman, I am aware of the basic issues, all right? But I wanna make clear that I am not an expert on transness. However, starting from that, basic pillar that I am fully aware I can never fully encapsulate the experience of a trans person, not can even try, I will do my utmost to help you. All right, so let's go back to what you said here. So you're a pre-transition trans man, you're specifically terrified of being misgendered every day for dressing feminine, and you specifically wondered if wearing pants in the Lolita Ensemble is even acceptable since you can't wear skirts in public without it really triggering your dysphoria. I'm going to break down addressing this into two pieces because there are two very different worlds we're talking about. We have day-to-day -day life and we have the Lolita and J fashion community. So to address day-to-day -day life, Life, given that I don't know where you live, I don't know how safe you feel transitioning within your social or familial like unit, I can't fully address that, okay? Your day-to-day -day life, I don't have enough details, so I'm gonna focus on a thing that I know, which is the Lolita and J fashion communities. Okay, so first off, if you're gonna dress in a feminine style as a trans man, super feminine, what I would recommend is, especially given that you're pre-transition, and I don't know what your plans for transition are, I don't know if you're going to surgically transition, I don't know if you're just simply going to socially transition, or both, or Fracking neither. I, I don't know what your comfort level is with your trans journey right now. What I would recommend is if you're going to go to specific Lolita events where you feel safe in a group and you're worried about being misgendered, I would suggest a pronoun pin. I've seen them before and they're very effective, especially in Lolita, which is an overtly feminine fashion. Pronoun pins can help. You can just display it on a vest, on your shirt. They make them in cute colors. They make them in not so cute colors. That's what I would recommend, especially because the people out there, especially in the J fashion community, from my experience, like they don't want to misgender you. They really don't. It wrecks my day for sure. So if someone 
who is wearing a very feminine fashion but prefers masculine pronouns has a button that says he him that will give me a heads up oh don't say her outfit is pretty say his outfit is pretty so I can compliment them without feeling like terrible after I find out I have horribly misgendered them like that is just awful so insofar as worrying about being misgendered in Lolita fashion or J fashion spaces pronoun button will seriously help. Like it helps you, it helps me, it helps everyone. Even after you've transitioned, like if you're gonna continue to wear super feminine fashions, pronoun button, man, that, that stuff's awesome. I dig that. I hope that helps. I recommend a pronoun button. Helps me. Maybe it's a selfish reason for me. I just don't want to misgender you, I'm sorry. To address your second question, that first one wasn't even a question, but to address your actual question, you're wondering if wearing pants in Lolita is even acceptable. No. <laughs> Full stop, no. And this isn't to be rude or cruel or mean. What you're actually wanting out of this is you don't want to dress in Lolita, you want to dress in OG. OG is Lolita's counterpart. It's male, technically, so, you know, clothes have no gender, right? But it's male, masculine counterpart. There's sweet OG, classic OG, gothic OG. Anything that Lolita can be, OG can be. It's just the prince version to Lolita's princess, right? So I'm willing to bet if you're asking me if you can wear pants in Lolita, you hadn't even heard of OG. Man, OG was made for you, especially as a trans man. Like you can still be frilly and crazy and feminine and also masculine all at the same time. You just smash it together, you got OG. OG's like, have your cake, eat it too. Well, maybe not if you want to fit into the vest afterwards. The sizes are small. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, OG is the way to go. I cannot push you towards OG fast enough. The cool thing about OG is you can get all your frills, all your lace, all your whatevs, and you're still like a Lolita counterpart. You still go to Lolita meetups. You still go to J fashion conventions. You are 100% a part of the community. It is in no way a downgrade. It's just Lolita's counterpart. Like, it is the masculine answer to Lolita, and they are a pair, essentially. So you are 100% still part of the Lolita community. So if you're looking for pants, OG's the way to go. To get serious for a second to address, we say that expectations for trans men in the trans community seem that they can't even be a bit feminine in their fashion choices because that apparently makes them fakers who are stealing resources from real trans men. I am sorry you've even had to hear anything like that. I mean, obviously I'm not submerged in the trans community as a cis woman, but I gotta call bullshit hard on the fact that anyone would even give that concept any weight. I'm sorry that you've even had to hear that. Clothing? and colors and makeup and presentation, it doesn't have a gender. I mean, yes, this is hyper feminine clothing historically, but you don't have to have a vagina to put it on. You can be the manliest man man on the entire earth and wear a frilly pink princess dress. There is fracking nothing wrong with it. You don't have to unlock an achievement level of like womanliness to wear pink and frills and lace. You can just put them on and you are no less a man for it. The clothing is just clothing. Honestly, humans have massively overcomplicated this whole hiding the tiddly bits. Seriously, that's all clothes are for. Outside of hiding things that shouldn't be seen by small children or the easily squeamish, clothing is about expression. And you can be a, the manliest man man who ever manned and still like pink. It's just decor and that decor does not change who you are underneath. Obviously, whatever sparks your dysphoria is something that should be respected and you should be able to say no to and keep far away from yourself. But there is no rule in this world that says that you're not a real trans man if you like pink and frilly things. Anyone who says so can huff paint. Be a better use of their time than using oxygen to produce words. You're in no way a faker. You're not stealing resources from trans men. So in, with your final question, should I give up on Lolita or at least try by adding some accessories to my closet and see where it goes from there? You don't need to give up on anything. You wanna wear pants, but also be super frilly? Try OG. Welcome to the community, absolutely 100%. And anyone who tells you that you're not welcome here or you're not a real trans man because you like frilly stuff and pink can go huff paint. It's a better use of their time, honestly, 100%. They can take a long walk off a short pier and no one will miss them. I hope they don't have floaties. That got dark. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. Wishing you the absolute best in your journey as a trans person. You deserve the world and back. I hope you get the support that you deserve. And fracking, welcome to the fashion. Go try OG. Don't let the nonsense get to you. Do what you want.
Hope that answers your question. Good luck, Johnny. Wishing you the best. All right, let's go to our next one, which is slightly less heavy, right? All right, I don't have permission to use your name, so I'm gonna name you. What do I name you? It's like every time I get a new submission, I have to name a pet. Uh, Muffin. Your name is Muffin now. We've gone from whiskers to Muffin. Your name's Muffin. All right. Muffin says, Hey Tyler, love the new series. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find any sources for this story in my quick attempts to find information for you. It didn't happen too far back in Lolita history, so there's a chance you might even remember hearing about it at some point. Long story short, I was talking about your new series with my sister when we suddenly remembered a particular horror story. At some point online, I'm pretty sure Etsy, there was a woman making accessories for Sweet Lolitas. Headpieces, brooches, the works. Her craftsmanship made her a little notable because all her pastry themed accessories looked literally good enough to eat. I remember seeing a few people online making remarks on how she somehow got the crisp edges and golden brown hues of chocolate chip cookies just right for the photos of her accessories. Naturally, some Lolita eventually bought a possibly expensive piece from her shop, waited for it to be shipped out, and unboxed it to see the most realistic cookie themed accessory ever. Later, when she had it laying around, or maybe when she even wore it, it started crumbling and warping. She then realized it was an actual cookie and made a post to let everyone know the online business was selling actual pastries attached to pin backings, headdresses, etc., to create ultra realistic sweet Lolita accessories. I don't think she ever mentioned even getting a refund since the seller didn't think she did anything wrong. I think the seller thought sweet Lolitas would have recognized literal cookies in the product images and have taken the dessert names in the accessories listings as being literal like cookie brooch would normally be read as brooch with a cookie design, but the seller was being too literal with the names and then omitting any disclaimers from the product description. I can't find any posts or even the shop name, but maybe you or your followers would be able to help? I'm sorry I couldn't provide more info. Who oh boy. All right. So uh, for those who uh, know what Muffin's talking about out there, if there's more than one, if you have further evidence, hit us up in the comments. To address your story, I have indeed heard of exactly what you're talking about. When some lady, just for those who don't know, made a fracking cookie brooch, brooch? Is it brooch or brooch? I don't know, I don't care. Made a fracking cookie thing that you pin to your chest out of a real cookie, lightly dipped it in resin, and it crumbled in the buyer's hands. It was a fracking pin-on thing with a little red checkered bow, we got a picture of it. That's a real fracking cookie. They dipped a goddamn dessert in some fracking resin and shipped it out like it was jewelry. We have several unverified reports that some girls even got similar brooches and fracking bugs crawled out of them. Bugs. Jewelry with bugs in it. That's like horror movie level worthy nonsense. If I buy some jewelry, the last thing I'm thinking about is whether or not I'm going to be filming my own version of Bugs Life. This person, maybe there was more than one, I don't know, maybe more than one mother fracker has decided to dip their fracking dessert in resin. This individual or group of individuals seriously thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a cookie, I'm going to dip it in poisonous chemicals, and then I'm going to sell it as jewelry. Because that's the thing you do when you're a business. This was like a thing. I remember hearing about this back in the day. I don't know how long ago because the archive system was down for maintenance at the time when I was checking, but like I remember hearing about this and I remember the girl talking about it. And that is exactly how it went down. She bought like a brooch and it crumbled in her hands. We got people talking about mold. We got people talking about bugs, reliving this. And I didn't even buy it. I just heard of it and I was horrified because I honestly cannot imagine what level of frick frackery it takes to think that you can dunk your dessert in some resin and sell it for a questionable amount of money. Because I don't care how much this lady charged, it was, it was honestly too much for this hot glued nightmare, 100%. It's awful, it's 100% awful. And I hate that it looks cute at first, and then you realize you're gonna be hosting all sorts of small organisms that do not need to be crawling around your Lolita or your jewelry. Like, on what planet is it okay for jewelry to mold? On what planet is it okay for small bugs, little bitty creepy crawly things, to crawl into your jewelry and eat it? I have no words. Her fracking jewelry drawer is gonna fail a health inspector test. They're gonna have to put fracking police tape around your goddamn jewelry drawer. Like honestly, awful. Who thought that was a good idea? What kind of fracking nutter butter wakes up and said, what I'm gonna do today is take a fucking cookie and put it in some poison.
I feel bad for the person who bought this. Like, I feel bad for the person who saw this, thought quite sensibly that this was just going to be a little cookie thing that she could pin to her, her little cord and look just a little more kawaii than everyone else. But like, her cookie literally crumbled right before her very eyes and probably to her horror as she realized she was harboring a tiny fracking wafer. I mean, when I look at this fracking thing, I have to wonder if this person was eating their own products because that is the only reason you would think that dipping a cookie in some goddamn resin was a good idea. Like, you have to be high on your own supply to think that dipping this cookie in poison and selling it to unsuspecting Lolitas was a good idea. I'm gonna wrap this one up. This has been Tyler. You've been watching Scarfing Scarves. Thanks for watching our latest write-in show called I'm Telling Tyler, where you can send tea, ask me questions, and so long as it's at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Tyler at gmail.com. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.